source to the distribution every head of lettuce. Okay? Because then, if there's ever a problem about one batch of lettuce, they will know exactly where it was or its, its provenance, where, where it originated and where it is, and they'll be able to take that lettuce out of circulation. And all the other lettuce, you will be, you will be, you will feel safe to eat. Okay? Companies working in supply chains, they're like shipping products from China to Canada. It goes from the factory to the port, goes from the port into the port, goes from the port onto the ship, goes from the ship to the other to another port, comes off, goes onto a truck. Well, that is a, a hugely time-consuming, labor-intensive, paper-filled process. People are designing blockchains to do this end-to-end, -end, where at each point, it simply gets scanned with the QR code and the ledger is updated saying, your goods have reached the ship and they're in good condition, your goods are now at the ocean, your goods are halfway across the ocean, they're still in good condition, they haven't been lost, they've arrived at the port, it, you know, you can track things just like a, like a UPS parcel. And it will be on a distributed ledger that anyone who needs to see it can see. And what's happening is, the financial services have started building ledgers that are now permissioned, meaning not everyone can see what's on it. Only people who are allowed to can see it. But certain parties can see it, and that can be a way of just taking all this back off this paper and automating it and making it more efficient and reducing a lot of, of, of problems in the back office. Okay? And the generic term for this is called distributed ledger technology. And it, it's, a, it's a complicated way to say software for recording ownership. And so DLT, blockchain is one version of a, of a DLT, but it's a specific one that batches transactions in a public ledger. But there are many, many ledgers being created. And uh, another Another great use case, so this company has created a ledger that can be used for trading of securities. And in fact, they found that it was so useful for trading of securities that it can now be used for any other purpose. Okay. Who here has a diamond on their finger? Anyone have a diamond ring? Gosh, cheap husbands. <laughs> okay. If, you're, if you're, your, your partner comes to you and gives you a diamond, wouldn't you like to know where that diamond came from? Like, is it a conflict diamond, or is it like a diamond from northern Canada where we, you know, it was mined with all environmental principles respected and, and rule of law, etc. So diamonds are now being put on a blockchain by the major diamond producers, and there will be a microscopic uh, serial code on every single diamond, and you'll know when it was mined and where it was mined, and who mined it, and who's owned it and every step along the way until it got onto your finger. This can even increase the value of right? If you're buying a diamond ring, you buy a famous person. Diamond. Yeah, imagine you got a diamond that Kim Kardashian owned, mm -hmm. right? You're like, oh wow, the Kim Kardashian diamond <laughs> is like an authentic certificate. That may make it worth less than some people got. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I got it. Kim Kardashian. Like, 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 <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, the kind of companies that are looking into this are like the IBMs, the Intels, the Cisco's, the accounting firms, the Accentures, they're all looking at use cases because it can be used for diamonds, property records, for airline miles, for like, you know, you name it. People are saying, why ship gold? Why not just have gold on a ledger, you know, and we can, we can transfer it without ever moving the gold. The, the legal profession, the accounting profession, healthcare, medical records, and finally, digital ID. Like, why do I need to carry around a driver's license and a healthcare card when all I do, is they're scannable. Why can't I have all my ID kept on a ledger that's cryptographically secured, and when somebody needs it, I can give them access to just the piece of information they need. Like, I don't have to give them my date of birth. I can give them my age. I don't have to give them my address. I can give them my province. Right? This, is, this is one of the biggest use cases, is putting everyone's ID on a cryptographically secured ledger that we can use for opening your internet, 
accounts, for getting a phone, for getting a car loan, for whatever, but not giving everybody your identity every single time. All the information that could be used to steal your identity, just to open up like uh, um, you know, a, not even a banking account, like opening up, you know, becoming a renter. I think uh, one thing that uh, we were at the thing last year they talked about, it's even more simple than giving an age, it's yes, no, almost. Yeah. Depending on the information, which I thought was super interesting. So now, um, one of the leading companies for this is called SecureKey, and as you file your taxes this year, you'll probably be seeing SecureKey. They will be the service that when you go onto your bank to pay your taxes, you will log on using your bank ID. You will go from the Canada Revenue page directly into your bank and send your money. And what you don't realize is that the, the software in between is a, is a cryptographically secured ledger that's kept by a company called SecureKey in coordination with the banks in Canada Revenue. Okay, so there's some wonderful use cases here that can make all of our lives better. Think about all the devices we have that are transmitting data. Who wants to be in a car that could be hacked? You want the data from your car that's being transmitted back to Tesla to be safe, right? If you saw one of the Marvel movies recently where they basically hijack all the cars, you know, there's gonna be so much data that is gonna be publicly available that we need a way to actually secure it. So you can think of all these different use cases. It doesn't have to be just Bitcoin that is recorded on a, on a, on a distributed ledger. It could be any form of valuable information, including your data. Okay. So that's it, so I'm, I'm kind of done. Thank you very much for your time today, and I'm happy to answer any other questions if you want to come down and if you have time to, to stay. But I appreciate you taking your time this morning. Thank you.